Receive your 25% off discount on everything on the I Am Melanin Magic website up through the end of October the 15th at 12 midnight. Please use the code LOCKCHANNEL25, L-O-C-C-H-A-N-N-E-L, and enjoy your shopping retreat. Welcome to Tunisia's Locks, Beauty Tips, and Potpourri, the channel where we get it all in. You can also learn more about the I Am Melanin Magic brand. Thank you for stopping by. Greetings, greetings. Welcome to Tunisia's Locks, Beauty Tips, and Potpourri. Welcome to the channel. It's been a minute. I am on the tail end or the end of a trip. A visit from my mom. She was here for close to a week and just left today. I miss her, mommy. I miss her. But it was a wonderful trip. Y'all know I was running, right? You know he was running. When you're with your mom, you know she'd be running you. You get back into that childhood stage. You forget that you're a grown person. But it was a beautiful trip, mommy. I'm so glad you came. So I wanted to get on today because during the time that my mom was here, I also got a retightening. Okay? You all already know that I do the front. And I'll probably continue to do that for a while. Probably start experimenting more. You know, I always tell you, it's better to be safe than sorry. You never want to be at the whims of the system, of anyone else. God bless the child who's got his own. So it's important that we learn how to do our own retightenings. Um, Ifraj and I did a couple of interviews this weekend, which I'm going to be uh, editing so that you all can hear some of what she has to share. That's my loctician. She's been my loctician now for over 10 years and she's absolutely wonderful. So today what I wanted to talk about was tight retightenings, tight retightenings. And I'm gonna be kind of in different areas as I discuss this topic. First and foremost, what I wanna say before I even really dig in is I wanna talk a little bit briefly about what you need to do prior to getting a retightening so that you can limit the uh the risk of getting a retightening i'm someone that believes that retightenings have an inherent risk that is unavoidable because of the necessity of the style that we have it is a risk it is like crossing the street every day and trying not to get hit by a car facts y'all facts okay this style has the potential to create long-term issues for you and your beloved locks if you do not take certain precautions. So understand that, that the retightening in and of itself is a high risk ritual that we do some every four or five weeks, some of us every six to eight weeks, some of us every nine to 12 weeks, all right? So understand that first and foremost. Understand also that prior to getting your retightening, you need to go through your hair and detangle it whether you are using um, whether you're doing your own shampoos or whether your loctician is shampooing your hair even if your loctician is shampooing your hair you need to go through and detangle that way when she washes even though your hair may still matte it's going to be a lot less matting there will be a lot less matting if you have gone in on the pre side of the retightening pre retightening phase and done some detangling all right how do you retangle you can use a basic detangling spray you're getting ready to wash it, your hair anyway all right you can also use the i am melanin magic this is really good with detangling it has some natural uh, oils in it that detangle and my suggestion is just to open up the hair like this to spray to rub in and then to gently give it a, a, about 10 20 seconds and then just gently begin to sometimes you're going to need both hands pull the hair gently to detangle okay by the time you finish doing this you, you have to go lock by lock by lock this is preventive maintenance when you finish go through and make sure that you can comb through the hair without catching any hair that is the main thing that you can do on the front end as a preventive maintenance sort of intervention to help minimize tangling. Again, if you shampoo your own hair, you need to shampoo your hair two or three days before you go get your retightening because your scalp will already be tender when you begin to go through and do any detangling or unmarrying or un... Um, you know, uh, creating space between the locks. This is especially true if you've had a lot of growth. 
do not miss doing this. You'll need two or three days on the front end so that when you get ready to go in for your retightening, your hair is not already tender. To go in for retightening and have a tender scalp just means that you're going to be um, more prone to having a greater degree, if not severe irritation on your scalp when you finish the retightening, depending upon who your loctician is, what her habits are, what her rituals are, if she sprays your hair during the retightening to detangle, whatever, whatever. These are things you need to do, that you can do during a retightening. And it may be on you to bring this in, IamMelaninMagic.com. You can get it from the site, look in the description. Or it may be good for you to bring even a water spray bottle if you happen to have a loctician who does not routinely spray your scalp and keep the hair soft and pliable if she's detangling. Even though you're sitting in the chair, gang, sister lock, gang, OGs, oh Kendra Spirits, even though you're sitting in the chair and the hair is being untangled and you don't feel the discomfort as the, re the, the untangling continues or the pulling of stray hairs or the unmarrying of locks continues and it's spread throughout your scalp, you are likely to have some irritation that you're not going to feel until after. So that's why I'm saying as preventive things, you go in and you do the detangling first, even if the person is shampooing for you. The other thing you want to do, like I said, is take in a spray bottle of something that is detangling so that as you feel any tangles, your loctician can spray your scalp and that will coat the hair and prevent some of the friction and it will also sort of arrest some of what could be a serious case of aggravation or agitation or irritation to your scalp. But do understand that the retightening process in and of itself is hazardous. I'm going to say that from the cradle to the grave. And even when we're doing our own, when we're, when we're doing our own and we're doing a wonderful job, it doesn't have to be as hazardous. But if you don't allow your hair enough time to rest in between retightenings, it can be hazardous and you may not feel anything. If you do allow um, um, that to be the case, but you do other things that can contribute to damage to your hair over time y'all we're talking about serious situations um alopecia uh we're talking about situations where you know you may develop scar tissue because of repeated abuse and i'm calling it abuse um simply because i don't think we really realize the things because we as a people have been doing this pulling on our scalp and doing this thing all our lives so we don't see how serious it is but there's no other cultural group that pulls the hair repeatedly and ritualistic the way that we do. And because we do that like that, we don't, and we enjoy the styles, we don't always see the long-term ramifications and repercussions of that until such time that it has become a systemic issue and we experience a lot of hair loss and then we're like, oh my God. And even then we're like, but I don't really want to take my locks out, but I don't really want to cut them but I don't really want to lessen the retightenings, but I don't really want to change my loctician, but I don't really want to keep my locks because that's what's going to end up being the outcome if you don't get on this early. And this behooves all of us, me included, me included, because even when you're doing your own locks, it is so tempting to want to tighten all the way to the scalp or even to go too close to the scalp without realizing that you need to leave two to three millimeters of space. Take a look at your, at your ruler. Two to three millimeters is two to three of those lines worth of space, which is not enough to put your hand through, which would defeat the purpose of a retightening, if you're going to call it that. But it's enough to give your hair enough pull so that it's not so tight. Even I, when I go through and do my front, sometimes find after the fact that I've tightened them too tight. Okay, and I know that when it's time to start to manipulate my hair. But I tell y'all, I've been using this for years and I swear that it is this that has prevented a lot of fallout or issues that I could have had with my hair because of the excessive coloring and because of many other things that take a toll on your hair by way of just going through the day-to-day -day stuff that you do in order to maintain the sister lock style. Once your hair has, well, how do you know that your hair has been retightening, retightened too tight? You experience scalp irritation, you experience burning, you experience sensations of pounding, okay, or a dull ache, which feels 
like it's coming from your scalp, but it also feels and can cause, a, a, can contribute to you feeling as though you have a headache, all right? Some people can develop sores. Some people can develop red lesions. Um, some people, I've had some of you write in and say that the pain has extended beyond two weeks, all right? That means you have a serious level of irritation that you have to arrest because the longer, excuse me, the longer that you allow that irritation to persist without arresting it, the longer you leave yourself exposed. It's no different than any other wound or any other something that happens on your body that you allow to continue to be exposed. It's important to bring some cessation to the discomfort so that the body can begin to heal. When you're in a state of inflammation, look at it as if your body is saying, we need help, we need help, we need help. We need to call your attention to this area. We need you to do something. We need you to um, allay some of that pain that you may be feeling or some of the irritation that you may be feeling. So if you've got a headache, um, if your eyes are like this, if you are finding that when you touch your scalp, it's tender, if you see redness, if you see lesions, if you notice the same area calling for help that's really, 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 really burning or it's really, really itching or it's really, really sore, your retightening is too tight. If your um, locks, if you're so obsessed, and uh, uh, if Friday and I talked about this obsession that we have with, that, that sisters have with this grid, the, don't be so obsessed with the grid that you pursue the grid and its perfection at the expense of just having beautiful locks and healthier hair. Let that fixation on that grid go because that will be the death of your, the longevity of your style and your health as well. It's not worth it. The most important thing is that you have a head full of hair, that you try to maintain the integrity of the style in the sense that you don't continue to notice further and further thinning because when I tell you when it starts, by the time it starts, you know how they say by the time you see the smoke, the fire is already there somewhere in the house even though you can't see it. Okay, so by the time you start experiencing thinning or breaking, you're lucky if it's in that area, but most certainly or most often it is a warning signal for a systemic movement of hair loss in different areas of your hair. And then you will also hear me say that if you come from a family of women who, I love to see this lady run up and down the street because out here in this country, y'all, you are hard pressed to find. First of all, you can't find a vegetarian anything. You're hard pressed to find anybody working out. When I say down in the country, your consciousness is a whole nother level. And if there's a statistic in this country of every three out of four people is overweight, you're going to see it down here, especially with our community. So it's always enlightening to see that. That's going to be me by the spring. Not running, but walking. Thankfully to these joints of mine. But um, as I was saying, and I don't remember really what I was saying. It was going to be something important. But um, along with the trying to maintain the health of your hair, ladies, this is critical. You know, it's kind of like they say in Georgia, you treat for termites because it's not if you're going to get them, it's when you're going to get them. This is a style where eventually you are going to eventually lose a lock if you've never lost a lock. Now, I haven't lost a lock yet. I have lost locks from picking lint, and I've had the lock fall off because I chose to pick some lint in the center of the lock, and I just wouldn't stop, and I wouldn't stop until it just thinned out, and I finally lost it. But I have not lost a lock yet, but I don't believe that I, there's going to be a situation where I won't lose a lock because locks come out for many different reasons, okay? You will eventually, more than likely, at some point in your journey, marry a lock. You will eventually, um, at some point in your journey, see that there's an area that does not feel as healthy or look as healthy. You, at some point in your journey, are going to notice a lack of luster and shine if, or feel that your hair is not as healthy if you've had these locks long enough there are going to be things that you're going to have to do at some point in your journey you're going to notice that your hair may well begin to respond to retightenings differently i'm beginning to feel as though my hair over time is starting to respond to the retightenings a little bit differently okay so you're going to have to as i say play pink panther you're going to have to take an investigative approach you're going to have to participate <laughs> 
actively participate in your own rescue when it comes to this style and pay attention to what the hell is going on with your hair. Now, you got the, the retightening done, you did it or your loctician did it and you realize the locks are too tight. What can you do? In many cases, if you don't need to take a Motrin or Tylenol, you're on the continuum of having less aggravation. If you find that you're having to take a pain reliever, it's because they've been pulled too tight to your scalp and it's causing your head to pound and the area's pounding. They are way too tight and the amount of tension or the gentleness or the lack thereof has caused that situation, okay? That's what it's going to feel like. What are some of the things that you can do? First and foremost, you, uh, on the preventive side or in the midst of it, is to be conscious when you're having your retightenings. This is where I make my mistake a lot of times because the Fridge and I talk a lot and we have a good time. And when you're having a good time, and I consider myself a fairly tender-headed person. I do have a tolerance for pain, but I'm very tender-headed as well. But while we're talking and we're doing our thing, you can literally, I'm not really paying attention to what's going on. I'm more focused on what's happening with what we're talking about. The last time she did my retightening, she retightened the top after I had retightened the top already a couple of weeks before. And we were so busy talking that when I told her we were getting near the top and she recognized that and we continued talking, she continued retightening. It may have been a kinesthetic kinesthetic memory or thera therapeutic type thing. Her hands just kept going. And it was at the end when I realized, oh my gosh, you retighten the top. Now I leave room when I retighten the front of my hair. So I had room. But my point is, this is what can happen. And these are the things you want to avoid. So number one is you want to be conscious when the retightening is happening. Or you want to begin to take periods where there's a restful state of peace. And you can kind of pay attention and tune in to what's going on with your hair. And notice if you feel any excessive pulling and so forth and so on. Okay, this is very important. Once the hair is retightened too tight, you'll need to mention it to your loctician, either during the retightening session, if you notice, so that you can feel the relief as she takes some of the pressure off or as, she, as, as the loctician doesn't go so far to the scalp. This is important because once you mention it to your loctician, you need to note that she makes an adjustment in her technique during that same session. If you wait until the following session, either you'll forget because you haven't re felt the pain or she'll forget because it's not her habit to be very gentle. You may have a loctician whose habit it is not to be just naturally gentle. T typically people who are not tender-headed are not as gentle. If you're a tender-headed person, anyway, you're gonna be gentle. If you rely on other people to retighten your locks as a loctician, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be a little more gentle. But if those things are not your habit or your experience, you're not gonna be as gentle, which means that when you start up again at the next session, you're gonna start out the same way you've done all the other retightenings, which means you will need to say something again. And do expect to say something multiple times. You will have to say something multiple times depending on who your loctician is and what their style is and be comfortable with that and find a way to say it so that you don't feel like a nuisance but you shouldn't have to worry about feeling like a nuisance in the first place but sometimes people can lack the ability to be assertive and they can they can be shy so give yourself permission to say that hurts or to say excuse me or to say out or to say, can you be a little bit more gentle? I'm noticing some extra tangles there or I'm noticing quite a bit of tension. Or do you mind, you know, spraying my hair in that area? Um, something feels uh, as though it's, it's aggravating my scalp. Or can you leave out two of the points on the rotation for me this time? I'm feeling as though they're a little too tight to my scalp. Your average loctician should respond uh, with positive feedback. She should thank you for letting her know that. If your loctician does not respond in a way that is polite or in a way that makes you feel as though she's open to your feedback, you may need to rethink that relationship because what that is going to mean is I don't really give a damn about what's bothering you or I'm going to do it the way I want to do it and you just need to bear with it. I remember when we were growing up, my grandmother was a cosmetologist and she had a, a shop in her basement 
Y'all, she would start out at 5.30 in the morning doing heads, and she did that up, up until her early 80s, which is why she can. She would always say you got to get up and give yourself a purpose to stay in this world and to live every day, and staying busy helped her. But she did our three hairs when we would go up there during the summer, my sister Halima, Sharifa, and myself. May Sharifa rest in peace. And um, she would do all of our hair. My mother did our hair. Our hair never hurt, but my grandmother would do our hair she would we had a lot of hair she would dry it she would wash it i don't know if she was using i I'm a, maybe she was let me not say all i know is it was tangled and it, there was pulling and so forth and so on and by the time she got ready to do the hot comb my grandmother would use one of those hot combs that was so skinny that by the t and she would take tiny pieces of hair different than my mother when my mother straightened our hair we got a good straightening but when my grandmother straightened our hair our hair looked like a white person's hair she would take tiny pieces of hair and that thing would go there and I we, we would be down there in that chair, y'all getting our hair straightened sometimes for two and three hours. My mom could do it in like an hour or less. And all my grandmother would say was bear with it, bear with it, bear with it. And when you had to sit down in that chair, when you got out, you looked beautiful, but you paid the price. And she would say, bear with it. If you express discomfort to your consultant and you feel like she says, bear with it, she may not say it literally, but in her mannerism or in her um, continuance or in her receiving of the constructive feedback, that's how you feel you might need to reconsider getting another loctician, all right? The, uh, once you go home, like I said, you may need to take uh, a mild, you know, um, you may need to take some Motrin, you may need to take some Tylenol. Beyond that, some of the other things that you might want to do is if you're a back sleeper, do not sleep on your back. Because when you sleep on your back, the pressure from the pillow and your the locks, whether you realize it or not, are moving on your scalp. When you sleep on your back like this, it's going to further irritate. So you're going to need to sleep on your side. You're going to need to make sure that you place your hair up if your locks happen to be long. Even if they're short, you need to just kind of get them out of the way, gently lifting them as you turn your head to the side so that there's nothing that can pull on your hair. My recommendation is not to tie it up, not to put a barrette on it, not to put a rubber band on it to pull it up because you're already experiencing some tension. So you want to be mindful of that. That's the first thing. The second, that's the third, the second thing. The third thing that you can do is take an ounce of this oil. Okay. An ounce is about what? Uh, four tablespoons. I forget how much an ounce is, but take about an ounce. An ounce is maybe two tablespoons of this. Add another ounce of an oil, like fractionated coconut oil, um, avocado oil. You can use hemp. If you happen to have some Abyssinian oil, that is ideal. These are all uh, lighter oils that are going to be non-commodogenic, at least the last three that I mentioned to you that are not gonna weigh your hair down. The, co the fractionated coconut oil, you're doing this as a relief type of a thing. You're doing it as a one-time thing. Typically, I'm not one that recommends putting coconut oil on our locks, but the fractionated coco coconut oil will be okay. Combine with this and put it on your scalp, okay? At this time, you're gonna need to really do more than spray. You're gonna need to kind of use a dropper and drop it in those areas and gently just rub it in at that time again stay off your hair you may need to do this twice a day um if you don't have the iron melanin magic oil then take that um you would end up having about two ounces of oil okay your two ounces can be the fractionated coconut oil and the hemp it can be the jojoba and the hemp it can be the avocado and the jojoba um, if you want to add a little bit of castor oil, nothing more than a half a teaspoon, you can do that as well, all right? And you want to add about five to seven drops of lavender, two to three drops of rosemary, um, two to four drops of frankincense, and two drops of geranium, all right? Shake that up very well and apply that to your scalp and give it some time to work okay the other thing that you can do is also to take a spray bottle and use those oils and shake it up very well and spray it on your hair now i will use essential oils and water i'm not a fan of shaking them up and then putting them them on the hair like that on a regular basis because 
you have you're dealing with hydrophilic prop the hydrophilic properties of essential oil they are not water loving oils and so that's why we use carrier oils oils and water do not mix and unless you have something that is an emulsifier that is going to allow you to bring those two things together or a solubilizer which is going to allow you to bring those two things together where you can evenly distribute it on your hair i'm not a fan of that although you can do it you need to make sure you shake extremely well and immediately spray that on your hair you can use the water and the oils that i just mentioned okay you can use your, the water and just the lavender all right um and just so you guys know, hopefully by spring, I'm doing testing now, hopefully by spring, I will have a spray for scalp irritation and a spray oil, um, an essential oil that is primarily water rather than just oil. Some of us love this. I'm one of these, but some of you prefer a uh, moisturizing spray that is predominantly water as the base. I hope to have that ready by the spring. So tune in, make sure you visit IamMelaninMagic.com frequently after say February to get your hands on that and an additional magical hair growth serum. It'll have a different name, but it's going to be an, a, a, a different one that will have the same properties as the first one, but has a different formulation for those of you who would also like to try that. And this one I'm really excited about. All right. So um, if you want to participate, if you're someone that wants to participate in some of the trials, please send me a text at 678-438-6442 and tell me if you want to participate in the, um, the one for the dry and irritated scalp, um, the one for the, um, the accelerated growth or the magical hair growth serum. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to call it, but magical hair growth serum number two um, or the um, moisturizing spray, let me know. Let me know which of those three you would prefer, and I'll take your name down, and I'll keep you in my, put you on a call list so that when it's time, I can choose you, hopefully, depending upon how many people respond, and you can participate, and I'll send you the product, and you can try it out and let me know what you think. So make sure you you don't forget to do that, 678-438-6442. Text me, though. Um, avoid the avoid calling if you can my phone I just get too much too much activity on my phone nine times out of ten I won't be able to get to it so I encourage you to um, text me or send me a, an, an audio message via text and I can get to you a lot faster that way I can get to calls but sometimes it's weeks and sometimes it, you just move further down that list of calls and people that I have to get back to and then my business is running and it gets to be quite a bit so um, it's just going to be more expedient but um, you can use um, some of you may just need to use water spray but typically you need something that is a therapeutic aid in that if you happen to also have chamomile you can make the tea okay you can make a tea bag infuse a chamomile and green tea in water after you've let it boil and sit and cool down use distilled water and then put that in a spray bottle and spray your scalp with that okay if all else fails wash your hair okay do not scrub your hair do not scratch your scalp just wash your hair preferably with the kind of shampoo that helps with irritation um a selson what is it selson uh blue um, might be my number two. My, my first go-to would be um, Sulfur 8. Okay, Sulfur 8 shampoo. What, what that will do is help to heal the scalp, but what it will also do for the majority of you who don't experience an irritation from it, which you would know if you've used it before, is the water and the shampoo will help to loosen your locks somewhat. It'll give them a little bit more pliability and that can relieve some of the discomfort that you may feel. Hopefully some of these suggestions help. If those of you in the comments, those of you who are subscribers have additional suggestions, please add them in the comment section to let the viewers know what else maybe you have done. I would think that in your journey, almost all of us have experienced a time where we had some sort of irritation or some sort of backlash from a retightening, even if it was a retightening that we did on our own. 
again if you haven't checked out my retightening tools video where I, I showcase 10 different tools that you may want to look at if you're interested in doing your own retightenings please take a look at that also research the videos on my channel by searching my videos and typing in um, loctician concerns or retightening issues things that have to do with um, the the retightening process that we go through ritualistically with sister locks or micro locks or tiny locks and some of the things that you need to be mindful of as you no longer take a laissez-faire approach to this journey be an active participant in your own rescue don't forget to go to I am melanin magic to get your premium hair care blend or your magical hair growth serum shout out to so many of you who are in your multiple number of orders of getting the magical hair growth serum the uh, premium hairspray doing so well many of you are getting the um, acne serum and doing well and a lot of you are ordering the anti-aging serum for those of you who do not know and experience any kind of chronic pain or discomfort and want something to help ease and soothe some of your aches and pains and things that are just nuisance kinds of concerns whether it be from joint pain inflammation muscle pain neck pain whatever try the ouch magic okay if you have trouble sleeping at night and you're already taking something and you need an additional supplement if you're waking up in the middle of the night or you need something to help you to relax and to help ease uh, any mental turbulence that you may have in the evening or just something to give you a, uh, an edge as you go to sleep or to take the edge off and give you an edge or uh, sort of an edge if you, you know how you have a race and you, you have an edge because you're about to go across a victory line. If you need an additional assistant or you need an edge um, to help you get over the finish line with regard to sleep, definitely try the chill magic. With my mom just having been here, I didn't realize she was putting the ouch magic from her below her navel all the way to above her knee and rubbing it in fully and getting several hours of relief from the chronic pain that she has. I didn't realize that. I also didn't realize that she was able to use the um, chill magic and it's helping her so much with going to sleep. And for those of you who use the chill magic, put it on your temples. She also puts it across her forehead, behind her ears, and on the soles of her feet. All right. So shout out to all of you beautiful, beautiful butterflies in there, out there in transformation just like me. I hope that you visit me on my Butterfly Transformations channel. I appreciate all of you and all of your support. Know that I want to continue to bring you quality content. If some of you want to share some of your experiences with your journey with me in the form of a video, please. It's very simple. Some of the other sisters on our channel, shout out to the lovely Terry. I love you out there in the... It, well, you, I think you said you were in Florida, Terry. I think you got out of there by now. I didn't get to respond to you the last few days because my mom was here. But shout out to you. Terry was out there and she had my book with her, uh, Manifesting Your Masterpiece. Terry, I love you. Terry is also the sister who was on our channel uh, a week ago talking about, you know, dumped on Labor Day by her loctician. And she brought up some very important issues, which I also discussed with my loctician. So hopefully when I can bring you that interview, you'll be able to, to pick up some additional insights. But definitely um, the um, website, IamMelanimagic.com, may have some, some items on it that can help you in various stages of your, you know, alternative and natural healing, you know, um, journey. Um, I love all of y'all. I appreciate everything. I appreciate the support on the channel. Like I said, my goal is to continue to bring you quality content. If there's something that you want me to talk about, let me know. I still have the video on henna coming up. I have the video on um, uh, locks uh, uh, for hair that is fine or thin. I have that coming up in the queue. Um, so, But if there are other things that you'd like to have me talk about that you haven't seen me talk about, or that you want me to talk about again, please let me know and I will definitely do that. It is my pleasure to serve you all. Namaste. Much love and light to you and enjoy the rest of this beautiful day or this morning, this evening, this night, whenever you're watching this video. Bye-bye. If you are not using I Am Melanin Magic Hair Oil, then what are you using? Hey guys, so I started using this oil called I Am Melanin Magic. 
since February of this year and check out the new growth. Like, it's insane. Not only did it help with my new growth, but it smells amazing too. See the dramatic improvements Denisha has made after not having hair around her edges for three years. Tanya's hair had been like this for almost 20 years and while getting injections. Her doctor said it was scarred and would never grow back. After four weeks of using I Am Melanin Magic, this is what she looked like. I Am Melanin Magic did this to Danette's hair after a short time. Hi, I'm the creator of the I Am Melanin Magic hair and skin care brand. My vision has always been to develop a line of products that meets the unique needs of melanated people. The I Am Melanin Magic hair oil is our premier product. It is the leading high-end supplement for your mane. It reduces breakage, promotes growth, and can be used on all hair types and looks from straightened hair and micro locks to wigs and protective styles. It's antifungal, antibacterial, and anti-funk, so you know you're protected. It softens and conditions your hair, and it's anti-frizz too. This really is all you need. It's rich with antioxidants, loaded with growth promoting ingredients. Look at the growth of my hair. The proof is in the product. Need I say more? Don't delay, purchase yours today. I am Melanin Magic and so are you.